Well, hey everybody, man, I want to welcome you to our services today. Uh, we start a brand new series this weekend called B1, and I want you to be one in 2021. Man, I'm excited about it. God's really spoken to us about this series as we kick off the new year, and I really want you to get involved as we think about being one in 2021. So how can you do that, you might ask? Well, obviously, we're virtual today. We don't have any in-person gatherings at our locations. We're going to be the same way next week. We assess this every day, and we want to be a good steward. We want to provide a safe environment. And when we're able to come back in our in-person gatherings, I promise you, it will always be safe, and it'll be awesome. Now, you may be watching today, you might think, well, man, I really need prayer. I mean, I'm in a situation mentally and emotionally where I need some help today. Well, this is what I would say. At all of our locations, our staff is there. We're ready to pray for you. We're ready to sit down with you, encourage you, whatever you need. We want to be there for you. That's what the church is all about. And at the same time, we want to always err on the side of safety for our region and for our locations. So thanks so much for understanding and just continuing to pray and continue to be generous with the mission and vision that God's laid on our heart as we, you know, head into a new year. You guys are incredible. So I welcome all of you that watch on television every week. Thanks so much for all your encouragement. You guys, you've stepped up and you've been emailing me and just thanking me for the opportunity to watch on TV. We're going to continue to do that because, again, we're right now in our region in the height of this pandemic. And you know what? I think we can all agree. I mean, can't we? That let's say goodbye to 2020 and man, let's just say we don't ever want to do that again, right? I mean, we just don't ever want to go down a path like we had to go down in 2020. And although I wish this pandemic was behind us, we do see some light now at the end of the tunnel. That's so exciting because I look forward to the day where we can come back to an in-person gathering and we can shake hands actually without having to give an air high five. Maybe we can even give a hug again. It's going to be awesome. I really do see some light at the end of the tunnel. So let's hang with it, guys, because it's going to be great. Now, in the meantime, Highlands has always been a church that we're online as well. And we're going to continue to be online in all of our areas. We're going to continue to stay on television. And hey, we're going to come to you every week and give you many, many opportunities to be a part of all God's doing. The church hasn't closed. We're open and moving forward like we've always been. So here's the deal. I want to encourage you as we start this series to get in a circle during B1. We have many opportunities for you online to join a circle of friends. What a great way to start the new year. And here's the deal. Maybe you're hunkered down and you're at home and you haven't gone out and you're not hanging out with anybody. Well, let me tell you this. You can take your family through B1 with us. Just take your family. Just come online with us. We're going to give you opportunities to do that each and every day, every day of the week. And you can take your family with us through B1. So here's the deal, guys. This is the question I have for as we start and look into 2021. As we face a new year, you know, when we think about 2021, we all begin to think about New Year's goals, right? I mean, we talked about this a little bit last week and walking a new way. We talk about New Year's resolutions. And I thought it'd be sort of interesting to give you a couple of stories. We need some humor uh, in our world today too, don't we? About some failed resolutions because it's what we know statistically that only about 20% keep our goals and resolutions past the end of February. I was reading, preparing for the message, I came across a couple of stories and uh, this is the one I liked. At the beginning of the new year, the principal of the high school, uh, this is a true story actually, uh, he asked all of his teachers, hey, uh, how about sending me your New Year's resolutions? A couple years ago, I think it is. And, and uh, so he gets all the resolutions from his teachers. And as they come back to the meeting, you know, you know they're, they're all back for the first of the year. And he has the teachers meeting. And he has written all of his teachers' resolutions on the bulletin board. And all of a sudden, as he's sort of reading through these resolutions, he notices this commotion starts, and there's this one lady uh, that's a great teacher, and she's all upset. I mean, she's just, she's beside herself. 
And he finally stops to me and says, you know, can I help you? And she says, my resolutions aren't up there. Why didn't you put my resolutions up there? I can't believe my resolutions didn't make it. And he said, oh my goodness, you know, I don't know. Let me run back to the office and see if I misplaced yours. He runs back to his office and sure enough, he had misplaced hers on the side of his desk. And so on the way back, as he's thinking about, I want to get a head start on writing her resolutions on the board too. Her first resolution for the new year was I'm not going to let the little things get me upset. I thought, isn't that crazy? That's sometimes how we think, isn't it? Oh, I heard about this one. This is what I really like, too. You know, this son calls his parents and uh, talking about Christmas a little bit. This one's a recent one. They couldn't get together because of the pandemic and said, hey, Dad, you know, how's it going? And his dad said, man, it was great. We missed you, though, even though FaceTime, you know, it was great, but it still wouldn't like you being here. So his son finally says, well, did you make any New Year's resolutions? And his dad says, yeah. He said, actually, I did make a New Year's resolution this year. And he said, well, what is it? And he said, well, my New Year's resolution is to make your mama as happy as I can all year long. And son said, wow, that's a pretty good resolution, dad. I wish you the best on that. Talks to his dad a little bit more. And then he gets mom on the phone and they sort of have some small talk. And he said, what about you, mom? Did you make any New Year's resolution? She said, yes, I did. He said, what is it? He said, well, she said, well, to see that your dad keeps his New Year's resolution. That's my main one. And I thought, yeah, that's pretty good as well. You know, honestly, I think when you look at a new year, It actually creates a lot of hope within us, doesn't it? I mean, every new year is a chance to begin again. And at the same time, as we see hope in 2021, I think all of us do. You know what? As the start of this year, we see so much uncertainty too, don't we? I mean, it just is an uncertain season. And as bad as we don't want it to be, we're still in the midst of uncertain times. Today, I want to give you a comforting truth. This is what I know. And this, you can take to the bank with you. Even though we can't control everything, I want you to understand, guys, God is still in control. You know, for those of us who are high control people, man, it's just tough for us when we're in a season of uncertainty because there's so many things we don't know, we can't control. But even when we can't control everything, our God's in control. When things are spinning around out of control, it's reassuring to know that God has our future in his hands. You know, we so desperately want to have a better year in 2021. We can see glimmers of hope in our future with things like the vaccine and all these different options now that medically we can actually treat this virus and so forth. And even though we start the year in our region in a really dark season, it's sort of the height of this pandemic for us, as we kick off this new year, we can still anticipate it with hope. I mean, we still can. And again, we do see light at the end of the tunnel. And even though it's been a long season of stress and sickness and fear and isolation, and we could, you know, that list could go on and on. I want us to think about this with the message today. How can we believe better for 2021? I mean, don't we all want to believe better for 2021? I know I do. Man, I'm an optimist, you know. I mean, I just, my glass is always half full no matter how much I drink out of it. I'm just going to always be an optimist. And I want you to believe better for 2021. So how do we do it? I want to give you three things today, all right? And if you're at home, hey, grab a pen and paper and write this down. Here's the first one. The first way that we can believe better for 2021 is this. We have to recognize the potential. We got to recognize the potential. Now, I love that word potential. Let me define it for you. Here's what potential means. It means having the capacity to become something in the future. Now, think about that. Potential means that you have the capacity to become something in the future. So in other words, when we recognize potential, we're actually saying that we know we're in a tough spot now. No one is going to deny that, but we can see and grasp a brighter, better future which leads to a game changer for us as Christ followers, right? It's all about hope. And hope is the dispenser of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let me show you biblically how we can recognize potential 
in our lives for a better year. You know, there's a story over in Mark's gospel. Um, I love the gospels. We see so much of the life of Jesus in the gospels. And Mark tells us this awesome story about a dad, a great dad, who has a son. And this son, since he was a little boy, had been really obsessed with a demonic evil spirit. And I don't know how many times this dad had wanted to get his son healed, but just over and over and over, this son continued to go through, you know, just incredible pain from this spirit that possessed him. So we find this story in Mark chapter 9, but a little background to the story before we get into what Jesus does with this young boy is Jesus practices in Mark 9 the rhythm that we've been teaching about here at Highlands all last year, this up, in, and out rhythm. Scripture says that Jesus takes some time away from his disciples, and he takes Peter, James, and John with him, and they go up to the mountain. And up on this mountain, this incredible transformation experience happens. Actually, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know what Peter, James, and John says they were terrified, actually. But while Jesus is communing with his father, all of a sudden Moses and Elijah appear. Now, this is the reason I think we'll know people when we get to heaven, because they've been dead hundreds of years, and yet they're able to identify, well, that's Moses, that's Elijah. And they come, and they're in this meeting with Jesus and his father. It's, in, you know, it's crazy, and it's such, it's such a, a meeting that uh, the Scripture says that Peter, James, and John, it just, it just scares them to death. So Jesus says, hey, guys, don't mention anything about this. But he had this time with his father where he's renewed, he's recharged, and he comes down off the mountain with Peter, James, and John, and he joins this in rhythm, this in movement with the other disciples. And then he has an opportunity to do something outward in this man's son, just the rhythm that Jesus lived. And we see it repeated in Scripture over and over and over. Well, while Jesus was with Peter, James, and John on the mountain, this dad comes, and he's trying to get to Jesus, but Jesus is not there. And so he gets the next best thing, the disciples that Jesus had now lived with and taught and, you know, mentored and helped them understand they had power over every evil spirit. And this dad brings his son before them, and they gather this son, and they pray over this son, and guess what? Nothing happens. Nothing at all. The evil spirit is as prominent in this little guy's life as it ever has been. And so Jesus now comes back down off the mountain. The son and the father are still around. And the disciples run to Jesus and they say, oh man, you'll never guess what happened, Jesus, while you were there. This guy brought his son to us. And you know what? We prayed for him. We prayed for this evil spirit to leave him. But it was too tough. We could not do it. And Jesus looks at his disciples and it's almost like, come on, guys. You know, you're killing me here. You can do this. You have the power to overcome evil in this young man's life. And he says, your faith has failed you again. Bring the boy to me. Just, all right, bring him to me. I'll demonstrate again how you can help people in this. And I think every dad that's listening to me today, you sort of get this, don't you? I mean, I got boys, especially if you got boys. And we've tried to teach our boys certain things. Like my kids right now, Timmy and Chris, they, they, they love taking my tools. And I said, guys, you can have the tools. Just put them back. Do you think they ever put them back? They never put them back. And I've talked to them about that a thousand times. Last time I mowed my yard, I ran over a crescent wrench, for goodness sake. I mean, you know, I'm buying blades now. I mean, it's just like, come on, guys. You know, you're better than this. And this is exactly what Jesus is experiencing. Jesus said, bring the boy to me. And he brings, the dad brings this boy to Jesus. And I want you to pick up the story here in Mark 9. It says, so they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, think about this, guys, just in the very presence of Jesus, when an evil spirit sees Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, man, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into the fire, into water, trying to kill him. And the dad says, have mercy on us, help us. And then these three words, if you can, if you can. 
Jesus says, what do you mean, if I can? Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cries out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. And when Jesus saw, uh, when he saw that, the crowd of onlookers was growing. He rebuked the evil spirit. He says, listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear or speak. He said, I command you to come out of this child and never to enter him again. And instantly, that evil spirit left this boy. He is completely healed. Now, I love this story. This dad, you know, he just comes to Jesus and he just makes an honest ask. Help us if you can. Now, I get that, don't you? I mean, this dad had been asking for help for how many years? And he'd gotten his hopes risen how many times to be crushed? Time after time after time. He hears about Jesus, and man, he wants to believe. But he just is real with Jesus. He's just honest with Jesus. And I would say every time you pray, every time you ask, every time you believe for something that you know is without your, you know, you can't do it on your own. Just be honest with Jesus. I love what Paul says over in Ephesians chapter 3. He says, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us, catch this, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Jesus completely heals this guy. This evil spirit was no match for Jesus Christ. Jesus can do so much more than we could ever imagine. So I just want to say, hey guys, as we face a new year, I want you to be one who recognizes the potential we have in Jesus to overcome anything formed against us from our enemy. He is defeated. We are conquerors through Jesus Christ. And understand that Jesus didn't condemn this dad for some honest doubting. He just comes, you know, this dad's real, and he says, Jesus, I so desperately want to believe. But you got to help me here with my unbelief. He didn't hide it. He just owned it. And you know what? Jesus moved in it. And I don't know about you. Man, I read that story and that gives me great hope because there's so many times in my life when I'm asking Jesus to do something and yet I've got some honest doubting going on, you know? I mean, I'll go all the way back to Thomas, the disciple. He wanted to believe Jesus had risen from the dead so bad. And he had this doubt. He said, Lord, I want to believe. And Jesus said, all right, let me have your hand. And he touched those scars, and all of a sudden, Thomas was able to believe. Jesus never condemns honest doubting. He helps us through our times when we need extra grace and extra strength. First of all, to have a better 21, to be better, you got to recognize the potential. Here's the second thing. you got to embrace the promise. you just got to embrace the promise. Now, let's go back to the Old Testament here all the way back to the book of Genesis chapter 12. And I want you to see Abram, before he was Abraham, I want you to see how God allows Abram to embrace a promise that changed his whole trajectory for his life. And here's the story. Look at verse 1. It says, The Lord said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. It will bless you. It will make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. Now catch this promise that God makes to Abram. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. (laughs) It's crazy, isn't it? So what does he do? Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed. Lot goes with him. Now, it's interesting that Moses wants us to know here as he writes this, that Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. Now, this is so interesting to me. I read that story and I think, wow, you know? I mean, can you imagine what was going on in Abraham's mind here? Uh, think about this, guys. He's 75 years old, okay? <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm in my late 50s now, and I'm thinking... You know, he's 75. This dude's 75. He's wealthy. Abraham is already a man of wealth when we read about him here. 
uh, he has an incredible farmland that is just like, you know, it's just, I mean, it's like Yellowstone on steroids, you know. I mean, it's just full of, of, of wildlife and abundance and, you know, just seed grows and he has bump, bumper crops and cattle and all these kinds of things. I mean, the dude has just a, a massive wealth of land. He's comfortable, right? I mean, here he is at 75. Everything's come up roses in his life. It is awesome. It is great. He's thinking, I can live here the rest of my life, and I can have it all. I am comfortable, man. This is great. And right in the midst of his comfortable life, God comes to Abraham and says, you know what, dude? You got this. I got so much more for you. And I want you to leave all of this. And I want you to go to a new place and I'll direct you. And there you will be blessed in such a way that every family on earth will be blessed by you. And you know the thing I love about Abraham? He didn't hesitate, dude. He left his life of comfort and ease. And he went to a land he didn't even know where it was. And God directed him every step of the way. He obeyed God. He left comfort and he found meaning. You know, often in our journey with God, you have to give up something in order to obtain God's promise. I mean, sometimes it comes with a cost. Maybe you find yourself in a situation right now, and you know, honestly, life for you is pretty comfortable. You got a job that you make a decent living in. You got a house that you call home. You've got maybe even a farm that you have enjoyed farming. And, and you know, it's good. It's comfortable. And yet, Every day, there's this little gnawing voice within you that sort of says, I was made for more. Is this really all my life is going to be about? I got the house, got the car, got the job. I'm comfortable. Could it be, you know, could it be that God has created you for more? And could it be that somehow the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you that, You know, even though you're comfortable, that maybe God wants to move you out of your comfort so that you can actually be a bigger blessing to other people. I think God does this all the time. God's done this in my own life. Yeah, You know, not that I'm anything like Abraham. I I, I was not. But, you know, many of you know I planted a church. I was there 25 years. And in the midst of planting that church... I inherited a piece of farmland from my father that had been in my dad's family for generations. And he had a big family. And so then Brent and I got married and we continued to add on to this farm. And we bought other pieces of our farm, our family farm, our generational farm from my other aunts and uncles who never had any plans to come back to the homeland. And then we We scope out our dream house and we build our dream house right in the middle of one of the neatest pieces on the farm, 221 acres. And I'm telling you what, guys, I really felt like God was saying, hey, this is where you will raise your family. You will die here. There's a little cemetery on the farm and I'd already picked out where when it's over me, that's where I'm going to be. I mean, I just felt like this is where I'm going to be my whole life. I felt like God led us to invest there. I felt like God wanted us to have the family farm. I mean, it was great. It was comfortable. And then all of a sudden, you know, I know God's moving me in a season And I think, okay, I've got to land a job somewhere where I can keep the family farm and I can just drive, you know, to where my new job is. And it ended up being my first job at Highlands was sort of being a pastor's coach and and just encouraging the pastors and the campus pastors. And man, it was awesome. And I would come to work every day and I'd drive back home and and I'd, you know, hang out on the family farm. And I'm thinking, this this is so good. And then Pastor Jimmy leaves. All of a sudden I become the pastor at Highlands. And I remember one day that I'm leaving work, headed back to the farm. And it was about this time of year. It was in the dead of winter in January. And on my way up John Douglas Wayside, God whispered, it's time to move. It's time to move. And I'm like, Lord, I I can't move. This is where I'm going to, I'm going to be buried on the farm. Lord, you know, know, I'm willing to do anything, Lord, but obviously I can't move. I've got to keep the family farm. It's been in our family for generations. It's time to move. 
So I go home, tell Brenda, I said, I think the Lord just said it's time to move. She said, why? I said, seriously, I think. She said, well, I guess we better go. You know? I'm like, well, don't you want to convince me we need to stay? Maybe it wasn't God. Maybe it's what I ate or something. She said, well, if God speaks, we got to go. And I said, well, you know, I mean, honestly, I'm trying to hold on to the family farm, right? And so I remember saying, Lord, if this is really you, then we're just going to sort of talk at Brenda's work and Maybe I'm going to mention to a few folks from old church, we're thinking about moving and um, see if anybody would say, hey, I'd like to buy your house or I'd like to buy the farm. And that's exactly what we did. And we sort of said, if we're able to sell it without ever even, you know, talking to a realtor or anything, then we believe, God, this is truly you. And within 30 days, it was gone. I mean, it was all gone. And we came we didn't even have a place to live. We sold our house with no place to live. And one of the families here at Highlands allowed us to live in a home that they weren't using for, for about six months, actually, until we were able to buy a home from a Highlander that was above what we ever believed we could afford. But we sort of traded what we got for the farm on a new home. And we believed that this is where God had us. And I want to tell you something, guys. It's been awesome. It's been great. Our kids have flourished. We've enjoyed getting to know this community. This has become our home. And I just think sometimes God brings opportunities and promises. You just have to obey. And when God speaks, man, you got to go. You know, in order for 21, the year, this new year to be your year, maybe you're going to have to give up some comfort and recognize potential and honor God's promise. Can I tell you something? God never fails, so hold on to his promises. So, if you're going to be one in 2021, first thing, recognize the potential, you know, just embrace the promise. And finally, I would say trust the process. Just trust the process. This is really the hardest step, right? I mean, when there's so much uncertainty ahead of us in our future, it's just hard to trust anything. Uh, it just is. Uh, just when you think you've got charted a course to go, then something happens. You have to change course. I think we all desire the righteousness of God in our life, especially those of us that are Christ followers. And we desire for God to make things right in our lives and our world. But honestly, guys, that takes time. We're not in control of that timetable. Rather, I think our responsibility is just to plant seeds of peace and to live as peacemakers. He says, blessed are the peacemakers. Our active engagement in the world is to take peace and just give it away, to invest in projects and work within our communities and region and literally around the world that will bring peace. Peacemaking, it's not easy. It's not an easy task. It's rarely recognized in the moment. And many times when you go down a road to make peace, there will be few others around you. But God is going to bring righteousness in the right time if we're people of peace. And if you're experiencing pain right now, I know 2020 has been a horrible year for so many. I want to tell you something. Don't you stop planting seeds of peace. And just like a harvest in due time, peace will be multiplied if we continue to love others and work through the difficulty of life. Notice here what James says in chapter 3, verse 18. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. You know, sometimes there's pain before the payout. But, you know, when you think about this, notice... Notice how God sort of gives us some peace from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. This is what God says through Isaiah. In chapter 41, verses 9 and 10, he says, I have called you back from the ends of the earth. And this is what God says. You are my servant, for I have chosen you, and I will not throw you away. Do not be afraid. Isn't that good news? For I am with you. Do not be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. You know, so many of us are putting hope in a vaccine. And don't get me wrong. I am so thankful for a vaccine. 
So many of us put our hope in some kind of treatment for this or for that. Don't tell you something, guys. God, through the person of Jesus Christ, is our ultimate hope. God is not through with us. And as long as there's breath in our lungs, we can be used by God. We're reminded from the prophet Isaiah to not be discouraged. 2020 was a year of discouragement for so many people all around the world. But God is not going to let pain and heartache go to waste. He strengthens us and he holds us up. And we can walk in a new way in 2021 because God is victorious and his righteousness will come in the right season. So we can walk in that hope as we shape our habits, our resolutions, you know, how God puts these goals in our hearts this year. God's strength and his love, those are our anchors. And we build our lives around his character and he defines our worth. You know, let me close with where we started. Who could we be in 2021? Or maybe let's personalize it. Who could you be in 2021? You could be one who loves others. You could be one who gives grace instead of judgment. You could be one who grows in knowledge. You could be one who raises a family with love. You could be one who cares for the least of these. You could be one who lives with open-handed generosity. And you could be one who walks in a new way toward righteousness as a person of peace. Would you take the challenge? And would you be one in 2021? You know... For some of you, the greatest decision you could make today is to invite Jesus Christ into your life. You need to be a part of the family of God. I mean, it's really hard to raise your family and to love others and be a peacemaker and recognize potential and embrace a promise when you don't know Jesus. That's just tough to do because our world, man, it is tilted toward uncertainty and depression. But with Jesus Christ, your creator, and you can actually be a part of his family and you can belong. And not only do you belong to his family for eternity, God wants you to do amazing things while you're here until he calls you home. You have that kind of potential. I just wonder, would you be willing to step off of being the throne and the God of your life? And would you be willing to invite Jesus Christ into your life today? Hey, I'll tell you something. You, you know, if that's you, you know how you know that you need to make this decision. Your heart is beginning to race. You're beginning to say, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to cut this off right now. This, this is getting too much to me. And no, it's just the Holy Spirit working with you. Because, man, the Lord loves you. And you might think you don't need the Lord today, but somehow the Scripture says you're blind to your actual true need. You've been blinded by our enemy and we all have an enemy. And today, I want to tell you, the scales of your eyes can be opened and you can actually see so much of who you are in Jesus Christ. So I I would love to pray a prayer with you, man. We, We have folks make this prayer with me every week. If this is you, just right now, where you are, would you bow your head with me and would you close your eyes and let's just invite Jesus into our heart. Jesus, Today, I recognize potential. I want to embrace your promise. God, I'm just going to trust the process. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to come into my life right now and save me. Today, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I give you my fear, my discouragement, my anxiety, my depression, my loneliness, all the things that are uncertain. Lord, I give it to you right now. I surrender completely to you. Save me, Jesus. Save me right now. And hey, if that's you, look up at me just for a second. I want you right there on your screen. There's a little button that says raised hand. I want you to just click that button right there. Just let us know. The Bible says all heaven is rejoicing when we come to know Jesus Christ. And if you're watching on television, just text that word Jesus. 
to that number on the screen and we're going to encourage you. We're not going to bombard you with anything. We just want to help you and love you and pray for you. But you just made the greatest decision of your life. Others of you that are Christ followers, could it be that God's calling you this year to give up some life of comfort and move into an adventure where He is truly the God you love and serve? (laughs) I just think, you know, spend your life on fulfilling the adventures that God has for you. Hey, I love you guys. I look forward to 2021. I think it's going to be an incredible year. Stay with us as we sort of help you get connected now into a circle or into a small group of your own family in your home.